Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokis Mystery. This is part 312, and the title of our lesson this, this morning is the, pra the Path to the Gathering. The Path to the Gathering. And in context with this title, <coughs> we want to... <coughs> illustrate through the scripture the three coming phases of the Father's master plan. The first phase is what we call the beginning of sorrows. The second phase is what we call the gathering. And the third phase is what we call the rapture. All have a place <coughs> in <coughs> producing the father's finished product, that is the adopted son. Scripture teaches before the rapture there will be a great gathering. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 9 to 10. <coughs> Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So we find the emphasis is not the rapture when he comes he's going to gather he's going to initiate a great gathering turn to second Thessalonians the second chapter verse 1 as we're turning mm -hmm. should we understand that the reality which comes in at the beginning of sorrows goes all the way through to the rapture Mm -hmm. So the gathering of itself is not a reality? No. Okay. <clears throat> no, it's a process okay. within a reality. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. <clears throat> second chapter, verse 1. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. So he comes and he gathers. Yes. <coughs> what does beseech mean? Beg. 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 So it's not inquire, it's not mention, it's literally you plead, you yeah. beg. Yeah. Yes. Paul is emphasizing this because he wants to <clears throat> make sure that this comprehension is not lost on the church like it is today. Now, having said that, <clears throat> we said that the gathering will initiate a process in which all things in Christ, both of which are in heaven and on earth, are going 
going to be connected. Now, as we proceed toward the gathering, Scripture teaches, by the time of the gathering, there will be no distinctions between Jews and Gentiles in Christ. In other words, the prototokos will not be identified as Messianic Jews, Gentiles. Everybody will have the same identity. Turn to the Gospel of John, 10th chapter, verse 16. Just as we're turning, mm -hmm. I can just clarify again the two folds, that being the Protodicus Jews and the Protodicus Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Which they have never been one fold. It the can't Jew. be described as the, the, whole, the church as a whole and. Well, it can't be. I was thinking about mess, messianic Jewry, but that, yeah. No. That doesn't really work. Never been one fold. It's always a. No, but I understand that, but it's always a prototokus concept, not a church and Jew concept. No. When we were first created, we were one fold. Yes. Mm. Yes. Why There's only been cool? one identity, and that's the identity of the Son. <clears throat> Everything that you have here is pertains to the earth. People identify from their earthly state. I'm a Jew, I'm a Gentile, I'm a this, I'm a that. So that raises the question. Mm -hmm. At some point, Peter, James, John, and the rest understood that they were predestinated, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Since they understood that they were predestinated at one point, why would they not understand that the Jewish identity was purely Adamic? Because they didn't have the fullness of understanding. What, what percentage or degree of understanding do they have? Maybe a third to a half. Okay. Paul tried to drive that nail home to them and they wouldn't receive it. Yes. Was it Abraham that was given the understanding that he is chosen? Where did the chosen come into the Israeli or, or Jewish? Or? The Israelite, through the promises. To the promises it separated them from everybody else because it made them understand that they were entitled to something that nobody else was but I, I believe he's asking did Abraham understand this or did Jacob Israel understand they all did this? Okay. I said it's the promise Abraham got the promise first right. and then everybody else that got the promise yeah. understood the significance except Esau, Esau. I knew you were going to say that thank yeah. you John, 10th chapter, verse 16. <clears throat> and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, talking about the Jewish <clears throat> contingent if you will them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd why is it going to be one fold because they're going to lose their human identity turn to Galatians third chapter <coughs> verse 27 and 28 <coughs> For as many of you as have 
been baptized into Christ. It's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about the new birth. <clears throat> as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, the identity of the Son. There is <clears throat> neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you're all one in Christ. You lose your human identity and the human condition in Christ. This is Paul writing this, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> it's saying at the born again experience? Yes. Okay. The problem that people have is making the difference, the transition from human to divine. It's not taught. It's not understood. Nor is it, you're not told to hang on to it the way the scripture is telling us to hang on to it. Earnestly contend for the faith. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <clears throat> but it's not taught. So Now this, this verse, 28, the apostles would not adhere to, <laughs> would not receive. Why? Because they clung to their Jewish identity. But they didn't grasp this at that point because Paul's the one who's writing this. They didn't write it. Jesus started it. Okay. <laughs> that was the gospel. That's a great they point. They did gospel yes. to every creature. <laughs> Turn to Acts. Well, we're going to deviate. Turn to Acts. Tenth chapter. Yeah, Acts the tenth chapter. Oh, you're going to read uh, verse nine down to verse sixteen. This is an example. God sends a Gentile to Peter's house, or a group of Gentiles to Peter's house, so he can teach them the gospel. Now, verse 9, On the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry, they would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth. Now these are, <clears throat> you did not eat anything with a cloven hoof, with a split in the hoof according to White's VH's law, dietary laws. And everything that he sees as a split hoof and other things. Verse 12, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord, Gurios. So he knows this is from God. Say that again, did he he says, rise, Peter, kill, and eat. So he's a vision of all these animals that have been considered unclean by YHVH. When you read the book of Leviticus, Deuteronomy, when he gives them the dietary laws. You're not going to eat anything that has this characteristic, that characteristic. It's going to be unclean to you. So Peter's clinging to that even though he knows God is telling him all these animals that have been considered unclean, you go and you can eat them now. He says, no, no, I'm not eating any of that. Came a voice, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again, the second time. For God hath cleansed that call not thou common. This was done thrice. 
three times. Three times. He knows who it is. Three times he refuses to do it. Yes. When did God cleanse the cloven foot hoofed? From the beginning. They were never unclean. We just read it. Don't call anything God's created unclean, which is a direct contradiction to YHVH. You're saying Elohim said it. Yes. That's, that's what he's trying to <laughs> The thing is, is it's like, this guy, I am the God. All right, all right. I tell you this all and so, right, right. but uh, it's going to be changed. And somebody higher than me is going to tell you, don't so call that. So there was no trust, basically. No. No. <clears throat> Peter's been directly standing in opposition to Elohim because of his tenacious clinging to the traditions of Israel's dietary laws. But doesn't that bring into question Peter's understanding that Elohim is greater than YHVH? Well, he walked with Elohim three and a half years. So He heard that? Elohim tell you, you've heard it said this and yeah. this and this, but I tell you this right. and this right. and this. He, w he was one of the three main components. Okay. He should have been the first one that rejected exactly. all that. What I'm seeing here is God is telling us traditions are nice, you know, celebrate Christmas and Easter and so on and so forth, but do your own thinking. Think about what is happening. Mm -hmm. Don't just blindly follow along with everything that you've heard. Yep. Think about it and get your answer from God. He's telling you, come check with me and establish a relationship with me. If all you're I getting, see. get wisdom and understanding. Peter should have known better. Three times. You know, he's, he's showing himself unwilling <clears throat> to do what he had been told to do but before the Lord left the earth. He tells him, gospel is now open to every creature. Go and preach. Teach. Peter doesn't do it. Anyway, <clears throat> he finally understood and he dropped down to verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them doubting nothing for I have sent them <laughs> and Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said behold I am he whom ye seek what is the cause whereof ye are come they said Cornelius a centurion a just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned <clears throat> from God by an holy angel to send for thee unto his house and to hear the words of thee then called he them in and lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Now this is what it took for Peter to walk under a Gentile's house mm -hmm. to preach the gospel. A supernatural move of Elohim himself. Yes. This is the first time I see the angel being called a holy angel. And this is not, this is or is not a prototypus. This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because the Holy Spirit tells Peter, I have sent them. <clears throat> well, the them that told them to go was in the form of an angel. So it's given the understanding that the Holy Spirit can manifest, direct angels to do specific things. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit that came upon wives VH in the garden and proclaimed Genesis the third chapter fifteen. Revelation knowledge. So the Holy Spirit is God. There's nothing impossible for God. It's God the Holy Spirit who does things sovereignly. Mr. Jones, as we're going through this, I'm I'm seeing how difficult it would be for somebody to just themselves try to 
read this and understand this and, and catch all the nuances that are being spoken of, well, God is spelling, telling you do thus and so, and then this guy is telling you don't do that, do <laughs> this and this and this and this. So now, Mr. Jones, without the direction from the Holy Spirit and without God's mercy, we wouldn't be having this gathering here and now. So we are such a, Amen. a, Amen. a yes. chosen group. Yes. The thing of it is, Mr. Jones, there's... Who else is doing what we're doing right here? Discussing these things and the differences between YHVH and Elohim consistently over and over and over, seeing where he has chosen us humans to take over where the angels did, where they concluded their 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 aspect in his matter, uh, his matter, master plan. Mm. So it's a reason for it. <clears throat> because everybody here has made themselves available. It costs us something to sit at this Absolutely. table. You had to come out in the rain. You had to get up at a certain time. You had to decide this was what you wanted to do. We all could be sitting back and laying in bed, um, watching TV or whatever, but you guys chose to be here to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. So you're going to receive his favor, you're going to receive his blessing, not only here and now, but in the week that you're going to experience in this week God's blessing the thing it is, because you made yourself available we're digging because you have taught us to desire to dig so we're going about doing this in these adverse conditions <coughs> but more than that God selected us from eternity to yes. be in this group doing this and wondering where everybody else is many a call few are chosen but let's go on so we're looking here at the aspect of progression toward the gathering. The three phases of God's master plan. Beginning of sorrows where all of this stuff is wiped out. Out of that comes the progression toward the gathering. The Lord appears and gathers his people by the time of the gathering. He says there will be one fold. If this didn't happen, nobody would make the rapture. Why? Because nobody would have the ability to right. make the change right. that necessitates the glorification. So you're referring to the preparation. It's a preparation. preparation. It's a preparation. These people think, oh, the rapture's going to come, the Lord's going to take us away, and, uh, you know, we're, we're good. Couldn't be further from there. A lot of people are going to experience agonizing reappraisals because sure. it's not happening the way they, think, they think it is. Absolutely. Where they've been told that it was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. But let's go on because there's a lot I want to uh, cover here in a short time to do it. Now, <clears throat> Scripture teaches, by the time of the rapture, by the time of the rapture, not the gathering, but by the time of the rapture, those who qualify will no longer identify with anything that pertains to the human race or the human condition. Mm -hmm. Turn to Romans 8.15. <coughs> By the time of the gathering, there's going to be one fold. By the time of the rapture, those who participate will no longer identify with anything from the human condition. Why? Amen. Because of the Holy Spirit. Verse 15 is key to this. I want everybody to pay specific attention to this. It's a principle that is glossed over, not emphasized. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. What does that mean? Those that make the change, the adoption, are those 
who have yielded to the Holy Spirit and come to the point where their total identity is as a son of God. Nothing else. Jesus said, you're in the world, you're not of the world. Jesus had to identify with the human race because it's the only way the human race could qualify for sonship. Once that happens, he teaches the gospel of the kingdom, the preparation for sonship. Sonship means you're identifying as a son of God. You cannot, you cannot harbor any identification with the human race or the human condition after that. Let me ask you, how is what you've just said connected to what we've understood to be the uh, erasure of Adamic memory of every human at the beginning of Cyrus? The <coughs> erasure of the human condition is progressive. Okay. It starts with the new birth. <laughs> It continues on to the degree that the person right. can eradicate okay. his connection with the earth is okay. the degree to which he's going to progress into sonship. So that person may, before or after a given period, meaning the beginning of sorrows, <coughs> have achieved a level where he the has already teachers, divorced himself. The teachers progress mm. toward that. that. Yeah. Yes, sir. As sons. We are going to be in Christ. Christ is going to be in us. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to imagine the scenario where I know it's true. I just I'm having tr tr trouble speaking it out, Brother Jones. But we are going to be as God, a personified re reality. Yes, mm. I am. In yes. other words. Yes. Who sent you? I am sent me. Yes. Okay, so <coughs> to take a human to that point, who knows that? And who can handle that? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Jesus. Person that's open to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the idea is this. <clears throat> the whole aspect of everything is your ability to transit from human to divine. Mm. People have a hard time getting off the earth to yes. begin with. Yes. The yes. connection is so strong mm. that people don't realize that it's a prerequisite. You don't have any choice. You have better get off the earth, otherwise you will never make the fullness of sonship. Sure. That's what Colossians, the third chapter, is talking about. Sever your connection to the earth. You are no longer part of the earth system. If you don't, you will forever remain part of the creation and never become part of the creator. Hmm. Simple as that. Does do the um, <coughs> the foolish virgins <coughs> fall into the category of not making that sure. Se you know, not severing that connection. Sure. They think they have it all. Sure. They have all understand they don't. Because understanding is going to progress toward the second that you change from human to divine. You can't never let that go. Because the Holy Spirit is consistently preparing us. Turn to, you're in Romans 8. Yeah, yes, Mr. Smith, what is it? I want to pray. Right here, right now. But I don't want to interfere with this, so we'll go forward. Romans where? Romans, Romans 8. 8. Verse 7, down to verse 11. Verse 7 down to verse 11. So let me just come in. Just yes. thinking that one has the fullness of understanding is keeping one on the earth. Is a deception. Right, but, but in doing so, it's keeping yes. that person on the earth, yeah. and they wouldn't oh, even yes. know. Yes, definitely. Mm. Right. Definitely. That's the worst thing you can do. Sure. <clears throat> because the carnal mind, the human mind, human thinking is enmity against God. If you don't let the human go, number one, you're standing in opposition to God if you've been called to be a prototokos. Number two, you will never, never 
make the rapture. You have to totally disconnect from the human condition. Because the human condition keeps you connected to the enemy that can keep you in bondage. The scripture tells us he's the God of the earth, the God of this age. And any time, Jesus said, the enemy has nothing in me. He can't do anything to me because he's not connected in any way to me. In that respect, you will always triumph over him because there's no way that he can bring you into any form of <clears throat> influence. Once the influence is received, the weakness becomes greater and greater and greater to gravitate to subjectivity. You lose objectivity. You lose objectivity, you're never going to make a connection from the earth. So if the enemy, <coughs> the Philosopherians, uh, were able to comprehend the significance of the rapture, the adoption, they would focus on exactly what you've just said, wouldn't they? They can't. They don't have the understanding. Right, exactly. They don't know it. But had, had, had they known, or if they knew at the point of Revelation 12, you know, 5 to 7, they would focus on that. Certainly. Keeping, keeping the human... First Corinthians 2nd chapter. <clears throat> the princes of this world, had they known, they would never have crucified yeah, the Lord of Lord. But let's go on. It's very important okay. for us to get this. When you understand what the human mind is, that it's been crafted to be a tool of the enemy and stand in opposition to God and God's plan for you. When you make that understanding, <clears throat> then you can understand why, number one, the Father puts us through the experiences he puts us through. It's to free us from dependence on the human condition and dependence on him. It's to craft us to proceed into the image of who we are, sons, sons not servants in the creation, but sons of the Creator. You put yourself on a path that will progress to the point of total identity with the Father. But let's go on. God of mind is enmity against God, for is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot, cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if, this, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. People in church that haven't been born again are not Christians. I'm going to repeat that. People that are in church and do not have the born again experience, which is the only way you get the spirit of God, are not Christians. A lot of people are in a state of deception. Mm. We just read it. Paul says, if the Spirit does not dwell in you, God does not consider you His. Why? Because He works through the Spirit. It's the Spirit that's preparing us for the fullness of sonship. It's the Spirit that enables us to call Him Father. If you don't have a Spirit, you can't call Him Father. He's your Creator, but that's as far as it goes. Let's go on. <clears throat> if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. The body in this respect is referring to the human condition because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, quicken, quicken your mortal bodies by spirit that dwelleth in you. Everything is dependent on us yielding to the spirit. <clears throat> Why? Because it's the spirit that gives us this identity of sonship. It is the carnal mind, the intellect, that keeps us from progressing yes. in the spirit. Yes. 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 Now, having said that, Mr. Smith. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you, for what you have given us today. For you have opened my eyes. I pray that you have opened everybody else's eyes the same way you did mine, Father. And I pray... Father, you got us this far. We understand your master plan to the point where we understand we've only just got started, but we are in a category. We are 
the sons of God. We are your sons. So, Father, I pray that you give us the ability to overcome, to sit with Christ at his throne, yes, to Lord. overcome and maintain our status as sons to where we're going to be fully adopted sons. So, Father, you have created, you have started a good work in us. Let us finish this work to your liking, in your manner, in your holiness forevermore. And, Father, let us truly be transitioned. Let us understand our opportunity and continue to pursue it wholeheartedly, without variance, committed unto you, your will, and your ways. And Father, we know that it's not going to be easy, but you will be with us throughout every step, every inch, every, yes, every centimeter we take towards the goal. You will be with us and you will make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way and we will please you and accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' name, we Amen. pray. Amen. 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 Very important for us to understand these principles <clears throat> because they will determine how far we're going to go. Five minutes. We're entering into a period now of uh, Mariko. <laughs> You heard about what's happening in Israel, right? We are <clears throat> starting into <clears throat> what I believe <clears throat> is a progression toward the beginning of sorrows. Israel is God's timepiece. The things that are happening over there are ultimately going to lead us into understanding <clears throat> what happens over here. And you're going to see the change progressively take place because they're entering into a new reality, a new state of existence. And in that respect, we have to be prepared for it. We have to be vigilant, extremely vigilant, because things are going to happen suddenly, quickly. Before you know, when the eclipse took place, I was looking at YouTube last night, people were seeing things that shocked them. They were taking pictures of things. Once the sun got blocked out by the moon, they began to see things taking place all around them, on earth and in the heavens. Uh, UFOs, strange creatures, things in the sky. <coughs> they were shocked. They couldn't deal with it. All they could do is take videos and send them in to try to get answers for the stuff that was happening. That's the beginning. We're going to see this consistently progress to a point where people are going to be so shaken by the things <clears throat> that they're experiencing. It'll lead to heart attacks. It'll lead to totally Greek madness to a great degree. <clears throat> so reading these scriptures lets us know that God is favoring us and he's expecting us to be prepared for the things that are coming down the pike and trusting in him more and more on a daily basis.